So now that we've thought about how what the content uh, of the website should be, how it should be laid out, organized, um, how it should we should navigate, allow the users to navigate around it, we can start to think about the layout of the individual pages. Almost every major website out there defines the layout of a page, and this is also true for apps to a large extent, as having four main areas. Now, not all of them are always used, but they're, but they're kind of at least potential areas to use. And one is, the first two, of course, are the header and the footer, right? So that's kind of standard. You have the information at the top. It usually has the logo, navigation, login buttons, search buttons. Then you have the footer button at the bottom, which usually has the, the footer section, which has the legal information, the contact, the privacy policy, things like that, right? Then you have a sidebar, and it can be left or right, but most times it's on the left. Sometimes it's on the right as well. It usually provides a secondary navigation, call to actions, additional content, and then the central content area in the middle, which is the main content for the page, right? And the goal is to create this layout in such a way that your pages kind of look uniform, right? That they all have similar headers, footers, and sidebars with the central content area looking the same, but the content itself changing throughout the website, right? Um, so I have the TechCrunch website here, for example, that has a pretty clean, classic style. They have the header up here, right, which has um, the different menus, navigation options, the search bar, um, a lot of the social media as well as some ads. There is the central content piece. Now in their case, it's kind of left centered, right? Uh, which has a story about a robot right off the bat here. Um, and then they have a sidebar which has additional stories as well as additional ads and, and uh, additional content down the side, right? And on the bottom, you have the footer, uh, which has some supplementary navigation, but also has um, additional social media apps, uh, how to sign up, and legal and other information as well, right? Um, and then if you, so together, these different pieces are kind of making up every web page. Every web page has a very similar feel to it. Now, often you won't even see the footer unless you scroll to the bottom, but users are aware as they're browsing the web that if I want a particular set of content, it's often down there at the bottom near the footer. So now I have the layout, I have all the content that's going into it, I have all the organization. We have to think about the additional elements. And by this we mean things like calls to action that might not be part, directly part of our content. Forms that we might have to design to collect information, right? Search to give users the ability to find those additional items and kind of embed it in there, right? So on that same TechCrunch page, if we scroll down the sidebar, they have want some TechCrunch gear? Shop here, right? Or join our Crunch board where people post their jobs right, um, go and buy stuff at our store, right? So these are all calls to action that they have on the side. And so you need to think about how those are integrate. Are they on every page? Where are they on the page? How, how do they really kind of integrate with the rest of the website design? Finally, step eight, or the next step is step eight, which is the visual design. This is in fact one of the most important aspects. And so we're gonna start, we're gonna talk about this in an entirely separate uh, video lecture. Uh, but one of the things I wanna make absolutely clear is that modern website design is done in such a way that the content and the aesthetics are separated from each other, right? Uh, this is often done using something called a content management system, but can be done in a number of other ways as well, right? And so therefore you have what the pages look like and what the content is, and they are not necessarily tied 100% uh, to each other, right? Um, and so that allows you to change the aesthetics without changing the content and change the content without changing the aesthetics. Um, and so you want to make sure that when you design the visual design, though, that it's consistent with the brand, the color, the imagery, font types, the sizes, menu design, things like this. And we'll talk a lot more about this in another lecture. Finally, once you've put all this together and you've done your website, right, or redesigned the website that already exists, um, you need to do continual testing. So you create your new design, test, analyze the results, identify ways to improve the website, go back and do number one and continually revising and optimizing the overall website design. I want to mention a couple of tools that kind of help you in this space. So there's a Balsamic is a very popular tool for designing wireframes to kind of flesh out the design. And I'm going to do a little video about that uh, because I think that's useful for uh, your marketing project as well, your mark group marketing plan as well. Uh, there's a similar tool called Azure that I'm not as uh, familiar with, but you know, definitely check it out if you're interested. It seems like they provide a little more tools besides just the wireframes to prototype the website. 
Uh, and then you can also, you know, of course, for the information architecture, for the site map, things like that, it's useful to use diagramming tools of various kinds. And one that seems to be very popular among website designers is one called Gliffy. allows you to do online uh, uh, design. Almost all these tools, by the way, allow you to do online design, share those designs with uh, each other, and then comment on them. Uh, and then a similar tool to Gliffy is OmniGraffle. Uh, it's one I use actually quite a bit. Um, it, it's an app for the Macs, um, and so it provides you with the ability to put together simple hierarchical uh, graphs and diagrams. And then if you get a little more complicated than that, there's a, a, a company called Moray that provides usability testing, right? That allows you to kind of record people as they're trying to work with websites uh, so that you can understand what they're getting frustrated by um, and what they're experiencing. I highly recommend if you're interested in that, go to their website, uh, check out some of the videos. You'll get some clear examples of what they provide uh, in terms of reporting. And the nice thing is they can be integrated into just about any website or app um, and uh, to provide feedback as to the use of that website and app. So that's it for user experience and uh, we'll talk uh, a little bit more about website design and some of these tools in upcoming video lectures.